Did you get a Sony A7S III or Sony A7C and want to know how to set it up for video? Well, I've been using the Sony A7 III for the past 18 months and I've been working on my settings, dialing it in, and I think I've got it finally perfected. I want to share those tips with you right now. Hey, I'm Chadwick. This is Creative Video Tips where we help you create videos that make a difference and stand out. If that's something you're into, click subscribe right now so you don't miss the next one. Now let's get into the menu system on the Sony Alpha System cameras. Okay, if you want the really quick, too long, didn't read version of this video, here we go. Custom keys for video. I've got control wheel to ISO. Custom one is focus area. Most of the time I'm on wide. Custom button two is center lock on autofocus. This is the tracking mode that you can use in autofocus. Custom button three, I've got APS-C Super 35 full frame swap. So that gives you that APS-C section center cut. And if you're shooting 4K, there is no loss in resolution at all. We've got custom button four is audio record level. One thing I wanted to say about the audio record level, which I have programmed to that trash can button, the C4 button, is you need less level than you probably realize. Um, right now I'm recording with the brand new Deity D4 Duo microphone. So I have found uh, around a six is pretty good for this microphone. It's also good for the Rode VideoMic Pro as long as you do not turn on the plus 20 decibels of gain that it has. So just leave that at zero, leave this at six. I think it sounds pretty good. The next page over, the multi-selector button is gonna be turning on and off the face priority and autofocus. Maybe you don't want to focus on someone's face. Um, the center button is going to be changing your white balance. You want to make sure you get your white balance set correctly, otherwise you might end up clipping certain areas and especially skin tones if you get that yellow set wrong. The left button I have set to zebra display select, so that's going to turn on and off the zebras to judge exposure. The right button is the auto exposure lock toggle. This is because I use auto ISO and I want to lock that in once I let the camera decide. The down button is going to be turning off peaking, so that's for assistance and manual focus. Page three, the auto exposure lock button I have set to focus magnifier, so that's to help also with manual focus. And the auto focus on button is the magical Sony clear image zoom feature. So if I need to punch in further than the APS-C allows, you can hit the AF on button that I have programmed to clear image zoom, and you can go even further in while you're recording. It's a way to really get a lot more out of the lenses you own as far as reach goes. Uh, this lets me get even closer, which is really handy because I'm mostly shooting with a 24 to 70 lens. And the last one is the lens button, the focus hold button, which I don't really use. Now here's how I have my function menu set up for quick access. You'll see a lot of them here are grayed out, like this upper left one, that's because it's just used in photo mode. So that's my drive mode, that's used to change if I want to be shooting fast pictures or use a timer or a single picture. Next one over I've got the creative style. Now if you get one thing out of this whole video, it's use standard. Use standard with zero, zero, zero. As long as you don't clip anything, it's going to be the best looking picture you can get out of your Sony camera, 9 times out of 10. I have picture profile over here as an option, and what this is, is it gives you a chance to use all these so-called fancy uh, you know, video picture modes for Sony cameras. I haven't found any of them that really work better than standard, with the exception of potentially sometimes using S-Log2 if you really need a ton of dynamic range and you can't get away from like reframing your shot so you have something super duper bright and super duper dark you might want to use S-Log2 and I'll do a whole video on S-Log2. The next one over is going to be your zebra levels so this is where I would switch between setting it at lower limit 100 plus if I want to protect highlights like the clouds or jumping down to 70 which is kind of a plus or minus a few IRE around 70 and you would set that at someone's skin like they're a Caucasian and then just drop your exposure a little bit from there. All right so back over here we have a touch operation on and off if you find yourself with your face up on the camera a bunch you probably want to have touch operation off so that your cheek 
or nose doesn't bump um, any settings on your camera. The bottom row here, there's um, we have subject detection. I have it left on person or human instead of dog for most of the time. But if I'm doing photos of my dogs, obviously I'm switching that. And then we jump over, we've got a white balance option, which I'm usually doing with the custom key, but it's there as well. We've got auto ISO minimum shutter speed, which I will link a video to this as soon as I make it. ISO auto minimum shutter speed is one of the coolest Sony things, but it's related to photos. So that'll be in a different video. And then we can tell it where we want to record our media to. I always have video going to card two and I use card one for pictures so that that way if I want to quickly get video off I know which card they're all on and I'm not getting them mixed up with Lightroom and you know I like to keep my video separate from pictures and then finally aspect ratio and this is really just for shooting pictures as well I'm never shooting video in 3 by 2 but having the 16 by 9 option lets me frame things up in pictures for 16 by 9 and then if you shoot raw you still have the ability to reframe it afterwards. It still records a 3x2 image. A little pro tip there. There is a really cool thing that they have added in some of these newer Sony cameras and that is a My Menu which is like a custom menu set up so you can quickly change different things. I have custom keys on the first page of the My Menu I have interval shoot function, which is what lets you shoot time lapse. The second page is the file format. With the Sony A7 camera series, there's really three video settings that I like to use. Two are HD, so there's the 120p version, which lets you slow footage down to 20% slow-mo, which is super, super slow. Um, the only disadvantage to using this one versus the next slow motion I'm going to tell you is that you lose the face detect autofocus. And then the other one that I would use probably more often, whoops, it's at the very top there, is 60p 50 megs. And so this is still going to give you a 40% slow motion, which is really slow, um, but it gives you all the autofocus capabilities that the camera has. And then the final frame rate setting I'll use, and this is what my timeline will always be set at, it's 24 frames per second, and I'll use the 4K setting that's on the camera here uh, to do that. And that gives you just a little bit more of like that movie feel, because those are all shot at 24 frames per second. It'll look a little bit more like a commercial or any sort of thing that's like high-end or premium, that's all 24p. So what's awesome is these cameras have it, so use it. And the other benefit most people don't talk about with shooting at 24 frames per second is your file sizes for uploading things are 80% smaller than if you shoot it at 30 frames per second. You have that many less frames to have to upload to a video service like YouTube or Vimeo. And so besides it looking better, it can speed up your workflow tremendously. So I suggest using that 4K at 24 frames per second. Another page of the custom menu section is if I need to shoot silently, I have quick access to that. And then finally, the last page is just there for things that I access a lot, like control with smartphone. I'm always turning that on and off in case I need to see things with my cell phone, but then I need to turn it back off so that autofocus works better. I'll do that right there. And the last page is kind of how you can organize it. So you click add item. And you can pick anything that's within the system. There's 33 pages of things you can assign. Pretty cool. I would definitely use it. Um, and it makes finding the things you need to get to all the time a lot easier. Okay, real quick, I want to touch on shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. These are the three things that control how much light hits that sensor. Your shutter speed is going to want to always be at 150th if you're shooting at 24 frames per second and this just kind of goes back to some pretty old film rules that we'll get into in another video but just know that at 1 50th of a second which is roughly twice what your frame rate is that's going to give you the most realistic or most natural smoothest motion blur okay so that's probably a lot slower than you're used to if you're shooting pictures a lot because you'd have blurry pictures all the time however for video it looks 
great and it's acceptable and the bonus to that is it lets more light in than you're probably used to with pictures so you can have a lower ISO which means you have a less noisy picture. The next one is your aperture, right? So use this to taste. Um, the biggest mistake I see a lot of beginners make is they'll shoot everything at like 2.8 or 1.8 if they have a real fast prime lens or something. Um, and maybe they're not using a real advanced autofocus feature. So what happens is uh, a lot of the footage you get back is out of focus and it's not very usable or maybe it's usable, but it doesn't look too great because you're always hunting for that focus. So um, use your f-stop wisely. The higher the number, the more of that background is not going to be blurry is the gist of it. It's also the, the less light you're letting into the camera. So it just depends on this. I'll shoot anywhere with my lenses from 2.8 to you know f16. It really just depends on the situation. The final big payoff here, if you're paying attention, is ISO. And setting this up for video, I actually use ISO on auto. And the reason I do this is it lets the camera decide what the perfect exposure is. And then as soon as I have my scene sort of set up and I let the camera decide, I hit my auto exposure lock button, if you're paying attention in the custom button section, to that right of the dial, and that gives you that asterisk. What this means is your exposure is locked. It's not going to be changing your ISO anymore. So we have a 150 the shutter, f2.8, and whatever the ISO is, it's going to be. It's not going to go up and down unless I change it. I still have the option to change it from that with using exposure compensation. So the dial on top, I can make it darker by turning it down here. And then I would leave it at that for, you know, a particular scene or or moment, you know. So Super helpful, really quick way to do it. Um, I highly recommend using ISO set on auto on this camera with using the auto exposure lock feature, which gives you that option just to lock it in. Then you're not hunting. Oh, is it ISO 200, ISO 400? You know, I think that's really only useful when you're trying to match up multiple cameras. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please tap that subscribe right now and leave a question in the comments if you're not sure about something. Maybe you have a better tip, let me know on there too, and that'll help everyone out. I'll see you in the next video.